Hi guys, in this video we're going to talk about relative dating. We're going to define what relative dating is and then look at some of the rules for relative dating. Now, I don't want to scare you, but there's going to be some big words in this video. So the first rule we have is uniformitarianism. We then have superposition, original horizontality, original continuity, cross-cutting relations, inclusions and unconformity. Uh, these words are big, but the principles in them are fairly easy to follow. So let's get into it. Relative dating is not when you marry your cousin, but rather a process by which we can work out the age of rock strata, so layers of rock, qualitatively. So this doesn't give us absolute terms. We can't look uh, apply numbers to these strata and go, oh, that one's 100,000 years old, that one's 100 million years old. Uh, but rather we can look at the different strata and say, well, that one's older than this one, and this one's older than that one, and that's the oldest and that's the youngest. So this is relative dating. So the first rule is uniformitarianism. And this states that the geological processes that are occurring now are pretty much the same as they've been in the past. And so therefore we can make assumptions from knowing geological processes that are happening now uh, about geological processes that have happened in the past. If we didn't have this rule, uh, we'd basically say that the geological processes that are happening now are completely different to the ones that happened in the past, therefore we've got no idea what was happening in the past. So this is the rule that all of the other rules hinge on. The second rule, superposition, states that the younger strata will be found on top of older strata. And this makes sense because you can't have a high rock be formed without a low rock for that rock to be sitting on. Otherwise, when that high rock formed, it would have been formed flying through the air, and that can't happen. So here we have the youngest rock at the top, older rock below that, and the oldest rock right at the bottom. Now this is always true unless the strata have been turned around, uh, which is something that can occur. You can have folds where the strata uh, bends, and if it bends more than 90 degrees, you can actually get the younger one on top. And you actually have to look at other things around to work that out. We then have original horizontality, which means that when rock strata were formed, they were always formed in the horizontal plane. And you can see these rock strata here, they're nice straight lines and all running horizontally. So this is how these strata would have formed. Original continuity states that the strata are formed in continuous lines and features that have carved out those lines have been formed after the strata formed. So if you look at this uh, scene that we've got here, you can see that if we look at the original horizontality, that there would have been a horizontal strata of these three rocks, the beige, the grey, then the beige again. And this uh, gorge has been carved out of that, probably by uh, weathering from a river or something. The rule of cross-cutting relations states that if one feature cuts another, the feature that has been cut must be the oldest. And again, this makes sense because if the feature that's been cut wasn't the oldest, there wouldn't have been any feature there to cut. So here you can see the main strata, which is this uh, lighter grey rock. It has then been cut by a white rock, so you can see that that's gone through it, which has then been cut over again by that dark grey rock. So what this states is that dark grey rock formed after the white rock, which formed after the lighter grey rock. An inclusion occurs when fragments of one strata are found inside another strata. Now for the inclusions to be found there, the inclusions must have formed before the strata in which they are found in. So here we've got our two strata. We've got the pink strata at the bottom and the yellow strata at the top. And we can see that there are inclusions of the pink strata in the yellow strata. This must tell us that the pink strata was formed first, then weathering caused these fragments or sediments to be broken off that strata, and then the yellow strata formed afterwards having some of these fragments inside it. So this is the law of inclusions. Our last law is the un law of 
Our last law is the law of unconformity. And this states that there are periods in time where rocks are not being deposited and this probably involves erosion, which means that we don't know exactly what is happening during that time. So for example here, you can see that we've got a horizontal strata that's been flipped 90 degrees, which is now running vertical, but we know that that was formed when it was horizontal because of the law of original horizontality. Uh, and then we've got this unconformity where this strata is formed over the top of it. So this tells us that along this line here, this unconformity line, something has occurred. There are rocks that there is a time here where rocks were not being deposited and they were probably being eroded away. So this gives us a gap in us reading the geological time. In this video, we've looked at relative dating. We've looked at the law of uniformitarianism, superposition, original horizontality, original continuity, the cross-cutting relations, inclusions, and when these things don't fit, match up to get each other, unconformity. By putting all of these rules together, we can actually look at a segment of the earth and the different strata that are in it and the shape that those strata make, and we can actually put together a geological time frame for each of those rocks and work out which event occurred when and put them all in order. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace out.